All right, everyone, last talk for the track for the evening. So I know you've heard it all before. Thanks for wearing the mask. Keep doing it. Keep hydrated. Not so important now at 9 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night. Keep your film muted, please. Audiovisual equipment is super sensitive. Unscheduled fourth track. If you want to speak, go up to the, uh, uh, the information desk, and they can help you sign up for a uh, track time. Karaoke is about to start, so they said they're going to start in 15 minutes. I think you should stay for this and then go to karaoke. I highly recommend it. Uh, volunteers, if you want to volunteer and eventually get a cool shirt, uh, go down to the help desk or the info desk or room 301 security. And away we go with Practical Steps to Improve Privacy from Mike McMahon. Take it away, Mike. Hello, hello. Um, before we start, I, I just want to make an announcement. There's, I work at the Free Software Foundation, and there's going to be a little member meetup tomorrow from 6 to 8 at uh, Amitabha Vegan. So uh, there's a little piece of paper here. Got directions on all that. Uh, so thank you all for coming. Uh, it's isn't it past your bedtime? This, this is the last talk of the night. Uh, thank you. So this talk is copyleft, copyright, Michael McMahon, 2022, Creative Commons Attribution Share, like 4.0 International. I'm the web developer at the Free Software Foundation. I've been hacking there since 2019, and some of my coworkers are here. They've got a table in the lobby. Check them out. Uh, there's shirts. You can learn about all the cool stuff that we do, which is a lot. Um, I have a varied background um, in education, manufacturing, hacking, uh, game dev, uh, music. Cool stuff, all the cool stuff. Uh, I'm an advocate for privacy. That's what I'm doing right now. I've been doing it for years, but um, Started doing it publicly, which is a little different. Uh, right now I'm hacking on the Pine Phone. It's a cool, not Android, not Apple device. And looking into machine learning, all cool stuff. I'll be talking about some of that later. I'm gonna be using free, non-free, and unknown a bit. Um, I wanna just define those terms because that's often not understood. Uh, when I'm talking about free, I'm not talking about cost. I don't care how much it costs. Talking about free as in freedom, if you can run, edit, contribute, and share something, I'm going to refer, refer to that as free. If you can't do these four things, I'm going to call that as non-free. If you don't really know, I'm going to call it unknown. The scope of this talk is specifically about passive surveillance. Um, you can only control yourself. Uh, but you can't really control what other people do, so we're going to focus on what you can do to defend against passive surveillance. This is not about targeted surveillance. If you want to know about targeted surveillance, follow these steps, and then harden the systems. Increase your OPSEC. Does privacy matter? Um, I'm sure if 15 times during this conference you're going to hear about um, refuting you know, I have nothing to hide. So I'm not going to get into that or refute it. You'll hear about it. Um, but there is 
a few recent times where things out of people's control have changed the way that they viewed privacy. Um, in Afghanistan, the United States troops pulled out, and then the Taliban was the ruling party. So a whole lot of people were like, oh, I have a bunch of things on social media. I need, I need that all deleted. And social media is like, I don't care. It matters. Um, you never know when it's going to matter. Uh, here in the United States, um, Roe v. Wade was just overturned. A lot of people now care about the things that they've said in the past. So you just kind of have to be mindful and you can't control all the time what other people do. So something that's really um, driven the direction that I've gone is the Edward Snowden leaks, I'm going to say. I'm sure you know about it. But to me, what it's done is all the companies had privacy policies before this. And what Edward Snowden showed is that those are just words. And if a company doesn't back that up, they might be sharing it with the government. It might be um, how they deal with your data on their site. But it doesn't necessarily say whether or not they've been sharing with another third party the entire time. So in order to come to terms with this harsh reality, you need to trust what people say, but verify. And the only way to do that is with free software. The one common thing I see is that proprietary systems are more secure because they are security through obscurity. Um, if you look up this page, there's a very detailed, accurate description of why that's not true. I'm going to talk about uh, two things to back this up. Um, Anon, I'm not sure if you've been following security news the last couple of years, but um, Anon was a privacy phone and they never released the source code. Uh, there were some really cool features to it that I would like to see on privacy phones. But um, when pressed, they said, oh, it's a, it's a fork of Graphene OS. But they didn't allow anybody to verify this. So what it actually was was um, several uh, governments got together and made a honeypot sting operation. So they made this cool phone, said it's a privacy phone, you can use it to message all your criminal buddies and it'll be cool. Everybody's cool, we're cool, you're cool. And it wasn't cool. It wasn't cool at all. It actually had some really cool features, but it wasn't cool. <laughs> the cool feature was uh, the, the keypad would scramble. So if somebody was over your shoulder and they saw, oh, you did that combo, it, it wasn't actually to unlock your phone. You could be scrambled. I want to see that. Program it. Um, the other one is Apple. Everybody knows Apple. Uh, just went on a road trip. I saw a billboard. I couldn't take a picture of it because I was driving. But it said, security? That's iPhone. <laughs> and that always gets me. I, I laugh a little bit. Um, you know, they did that. We fought the FBI, they wanted to unlock an iPhone. We said, no, Ooh. But they're asking you to trust them, but you can't verify it. That's a serious problem. So throughout this talk, I'm going to be talking about different steps that you can take. How much of this matters to you personally? several people here, it's going to differ. So you have to ask yourself, what are you trying to protect yourself from? I'm not going to be like really into uh, threat assessments or whatever. You just have to kind of take it upon yourself. Uh, one way that I think about it is with these different levels of protection. Uh, basic is public. What is public information? Um, next thing is interested individuals. I think of this as like nosy neighbors. 
beyond that, there's petty criminals. It's like crimes of opportunity. They're not actively trying to steal your credit card or whatever, but if they had the opportunity, would they? Beyond that, you've got criminal organizations, corporations, governments. Those are kind of self-explanatory. And then yourself. If you don't know information, you can't give it up. It's kind of cool. <laughs> Think about that. So a, a new campaign that uh, Greg's been working on. It's called the Freedom Ladder. And this is um, a, a new campaign with the FSF. This talk is about this concept, but it's my interpretation of this concept. So I'm going to use a ladder, and the bottom of the bottom rung of the ladder is going to be basic things that are available in the store. The top of the ladder is going to be the, the most secure version of that. This first slide is really, really heavy. I know it's late, so um, I'm going to start with, with this very important one. If, if uh, you find that you've got to go to sleep. At least you've seen this one. Um, so there's a, a, a sad reality with today in that anything that you can buy in a store is usually not secure or in a way it doesn't have your best interests in mind. So Apple and Android, uh, I'm sure you'll hear people debating, oh, Apple's more secure, oh, Android's more secure. I don't care. Um, they both are doing things that are not good for the general public. So what can you do to make that better? What can you do to take back privacy? Install F-Droid. It's a, it's a free app store that you can load on your phone. You can load on any phone, follow the instructions, and then use the apps there. There are, uh, I was using a, a Nexus 5X before I got the Pine phone, and I didn't load any Google apps on there. I just used F-Droid. F-Droid's great. Beyond that, there's several official Android alternatives. Uh, in the lobby, there's, there's one. Um, I used to use Copperhead OS, which turned into Graphene or Calyx, and depending on who you ask. Um, there's Lineage OS, which I was using for many years. Um, I'll get into more of that later. Um, but you can flash this Google-less Android onto your phone, and then you can add Google back onto it. Now, some, some people need to have some Google on there, but I think it's still a step up from just having Android that you get at the store. It doesn't work on every phone. Um, I'll show you a link where there's some places where you can actually find what phones are compatible. Um, what I like to do is, what I like to do is to flash a, another phone and then not put Google back onto it. I just used F-Droid. Not everybody can do that, but it, it's possible I was doing it. Beyond that is Replicant. Uh, Replicant is Android with all the Google parts and non-free software removed. A lot of the um, Graphene OS, E, Calyx, Lineage OS, they use uh, non-free drivers just to make it work. Uh, Replicant doesn't have any of that. So there's less phones it works on, but you can somewhat trust it. Beyond that is separated modem. Uh, I'll get into that later. And beyond that is no phone. Uh, I, I can't do no phone, so I'm, I'm not going to go that high. But um, I know at least a handful of people that have done it, so it's possible. Uh, I'm a dad, so I actually need to receive calls. So let's, uh, let's talk about official Android alternatives. Uh, I use Lineage OS. There's a link which devices work with it. Uh, instead of going to a store and buying a phone, I, I would check a list first and then buy a, buy a phone and then flash it. Uh, Graphene OS uh, works on the, the Pixel line. Uh, and then there's Replicant. And cool new uh, campaign from Free Software Foundation Europe is called Upcycling Android. And they kind of talk about why it's an important thing. And they like tell governments, hey, it's a really important thing. 
Separated modem is, is new, cooler stuff. Doesn't work for everybody. Um, right now this falls into the works for me category. Uh, Librem 5, if you can get one, it's pretty cool. Gets a little hot. Uh, PinePhone is really great. Um, using the PinePhone Pro uh, as my daily driver. Uh, it's not perfect. It's for developers and tinkerers. Hey, we're at a hacker conference, so that's that might be you. Um, check it out. Now, uh, what I spend most of the time on is the desktop and the laptop. The things you buy at the store don't have your best interest in mind. Chrome OS, Mac OS, Windows. Uh, but you can take most of those computers, not the, not the Chrome OS, but uh, you can take those computers and you can flash new software on them. So if you, if you even had that and you just added a little bit of free software on it, that's, that's a good start. Getting used to those applications will help you with the next rung. Third one up is uh, using GNU Linux. Using free software operating system and then using non-free software with it. That's still better than using Mac or Windows with free software. And what we do at work is we use GNU Linux without any non-free software. Uh, not everybody can do that, but we're an example of we can do it and we do do it. Uh, this is a very simplified version of this slide, but um, from the moment you press the power button on a machine, you're talking about the BIOS with the computer. Um, whenever you buy a computer from the store, it's got a proprietary BIOS on it. Um, there are alternatives. Core Boot is a popular one. And beyond that is Libre Boot, which has all the binary parts stripped out of it. Uh, there's very few motherboards, systems that can run this, but if you look for them, you can get them. You can try it. Now, uh, we are in New York City, and a weird thing is that anywhere you are in New York City, you're probably within f distance of four voice assistants. Uh, Siri, OK, Google, Alexa, Cortana, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't trust any of those, but um, they're around all the time. So uh, Alexa, buy some beans. Did that work? Uh, I always want to do that. Uh, Mycroft. There's a, there's a few alternatives. Mycroft is one, but it uses, by default, it uses the, uh, I want to say OK, Google. So it uses like a proxy. You go through Mycroft servers. So you're still talking with OK Google, but through Mycroft. I still don't trust that. Um, but I have been looking into speech to text, and Vosk is pretty cool. So if we get Mycroft to work with Vosk, and then you don't use a non-free GPU, I think that would be the that be a voice assistant that I could get behind. I haven't tried it yet. I don't use it. Televisions are pretty easy, but in being so easy, it's kind of hard. Um, if you go to a store, you get a, see a whole line of smart TVs. Smart TVs are like the, the telescreens from 1984. They're listening, and sometimes they have cameras, and that weirds me out. I have a dumb TV. It just displays stuff that I tell it to. Um, but it's harder and harder to get dumb TVs, so that's a, that's a problem. Um, I don't see a solution for that one, so don't buy them. Or buy used ones while you can. Uh, we're going to be out of luck soon. Uh, servers, um, FSFE again, has this cool sticker. Uh, there is no cloud, just other people's computers. So self-host if you can. Uh, back to the desktops and laptops screen, you can like follow that same kind of trend. Um, the Free Software Foundation, we use the ASUS uh, KGP, uh, pff, help me out, what's, what's the D16 motherboard? KGPE D16, thank you, it's, uh, it's kind of late. Um, so we use that with Libreboot and Triscoll. It's a pretty good server. With uh, routers, 
which you find at the store. Again, it's got like some kind of who knows what drivers on there. But you can find ones that can flash other operating systems. There's DDWRT um, that has the most support. Uh, then you have OpenWRT, which takes some of the, the non-free drivers out of there. And then you have LibreCMC, which has no non-free drivers on it. Um, the Netgear, one of those models you can get for like $30 online. Um, and then you can flash your own operating system. And then you have a free router. It's kind of cool. Had a lot of coffee, so I'm blazing through this. We'll have plenty of time for questions. It's great. Um, so that's like the hardware part of it. Um, I'm going to talk about how you can secure those things just a little bit. I'm not going to go too too far into hardening. Just the basics. Uh, don't reuse passwords. Don't. Um, don't reuse like a formula for passwords. Sometimes you'll see like uh, password dumps and the end is the, the name of the website. Well, if you see that pattern, then they can guess. So don't reuse passwords, don't make guessable passwords. Use an offline password manager that you can trust. KeyPass XC is a good one. Check it out. It doesn't store your passwords on the cloud. You store it, it's kind of cool. And uh, another big important tip is to only keep passwords and keys where you need them to be. Um, I have several KeyPassXC databases and I have one master one on a computer I can trust and then every other computer that doesn't need to have all of them only has the ones that they need. Um, that's an important concept that I haven't heard much. Uh, with maps, I only know of one good one, and it's OpenStreetMap. I hear a lot of people complaining about, oh, this this map wasn't right. I sent a request for them to fix it. They didn't fix it. With OpenStreetMap, you can just fix it. It's kind of cool, um, and I do that. It's great. Um, Street Complete is an F-Droid app where you can um, modify things that need fixing near you. So if you're looking for like a reason to get out of the house. It's, you're actually doing something instead of playing Pokemon Go. Web browsers, Chrome, Edge, Safari, all the Chrome alternatives. Uh, I don't trust those. Firefox is very cool. They're doing things differently. And A Browser, IceCat, and LibreWolf, I haven't used that last one, are all Firefox uh, that it's a little better for your privacy. Proxies, use a proxy. There's uh, VPNs, open VPN, you can run your own Tor. Browser fingerprinting is a very important thing that I'm still trying to wrap my head around. EFFs, cover your tracks, is a really nice way to kind of wrap your head around this. How unique is your browser settings? And it'll, it'll say, it'll probably say you're unique. The most effective way to um, blend in with the crowd is to use the Tor browser. Now, not everybody's comfortable with that. So uh, w one of the projects that we've been working on is JShelter. You've probably not heard of it because it's kind of new. But it's very cool. You should check it out. JShelter.org works for um, pretty much every browser. It'll, whenever a, a website's JavaScript is trying to track you, it'll like mess with it. I like it. It's, it's getting better, better every day. Ads and trackers are part of this puzzle of fingerprinting. uBlock Origin is a very important extension. You can use it on pretty much everything. I have it on my phone. Um, it just blocks most of the bad stuff right off the bat. But you have to install it on every device. Pi-hole is a cool project. You can self-host it. Um, it's an easy self-host one. If, you're, if you want to get into self-hosting, it's like a nice starter project. Um, 
so it blocks bad things on the network. So I have it set up at home, my router points to it for DNS, and then all the devices in my house check whether they should resolve an address with Pi-hole first. So it blocks about 30% of the requests on average, and that's 30% of the requests that you don't need. So your, the internet traffic that you do want is faster. Pretty cool. Do it. Let's talk about JavaScript a bit. Um, when you're on the internet, you're running code that you've probably not ever read. Somebody else wrote that code, and can you trust it? Sometimes, but not all the time. Uh, no script, made by uh, Giorgio, is a really great first line of defense. By default, it'll block everything. Then you can go through and say, I trust this website, don't trust this website. Let's refresh and see if the page works. That's pretty good. Uh, the FSF makes another project called LibreJS, and it tries to check the license of every piece of JavaScript. If it doesn't pass the license check, doesn't run it. Um, that'll break a lot of websites, but you'll be a little more secure. You can also just disable JavaScript entirely. Even if uh, the license is formulated correctly, it could still be not having your best intentions. I, I haven't seen an actual use case of that in the wild, but it could happen. So you could just disable it all. The FSF runs a really cool website called emailselfdefense.fsf.org. And it is a tutorial to set up GPG, PGP on your email. Encrypt your emails. If you encrypt your emails, your email provider that you don't run can't read your emails. Pretty cool. I'll give you my, my GPG key at the end if you send me a encrypted email. This slides a lot, so bear with me. There's a, there's a simple, simpler view of this. Um, Free Software Foundation India made a cool chart called Better Than WhatsApp. And let's talk about this. Um, at the bottom of the rung, you got non-free clients, unknown backends, and centralization. Can anybody come up with an example of this? I got, I got a few of them. Did I, did I hear a taker? WhatsApp. Correct. Yeah. Um, iMessage is another one. Um, Facebook Messenger. There's a lot of them. Telegram's a little different. Telegram's a free client with an unknown backend and centralization. So that's the next one. And that's the only example I have for that one. So, way to go. Uh, third one, free client, free backend, and centralization. I only have one of these two. Does anybody know what this one is? Signal, yeah. I hear a lot of security people love Signal. I don't use it. Next up, we got free client, free backend, federation. Now, uh, you might be using this one at this conference. Matrix. Yeah. Last one, free client, peer to peer. Briar. GNU Jamie, Briar, Session, any others? Yeah. With translations, um, since I made this slide, there's, there's one more that I know of. Google translates what most people use, but then you're sending the content that you want translated to Google, and then they're sending what they think it is back. If you use uh, Argos Translate, you can run it yourself on the command line without communicating with anybody. 
You can also self-host Argos Translate as Libra Translate. Really cool tech. It's uh, machine learning. The models are like 100 megabytes. You can run it on really, really old tech. Super cool. Now, um, the really cool remote communication stuff, I've been putting in this list. This is a, a wiki, libreplanet.org slash wiki slash remote communication. Um, there's a lot of categories. It's a wiki, so you can like, add it, add new ones yourself. There's a short link, so you don't have to type that whole thing. Here's some other examples. Uh, Google Docs, you could use Etherpad. Zoom, Microsoft Teams, you can use Big Blue Button or Jitsi. Those are cool. So I just want to say thank you to Hope2600. Thank you to all of the developers that made the tech that I worked on. This stock with uh, Trispol, Libreboot, Etherpad, GIMP, LibreOffice, Vim, NeoVim, Firefox, A Browser, and all the projects that I talked about. I've used uh, a good number of them. They take some work to make uh, work, but you can do it. Just do one thing at a time. There's a lot of things that I referenced. Let me take a look. Here's, uh, here's my contact information. There's my emails, my GPG fingerprint. You can go to email self-defense, figure out how that works, send me an encrypted email, and then only we can read it. It's kind of cool. Um, I'm IRC, follow me on Mastodon. Uh, me and my friends self-host that, it's cool. Um, I'm on Forges under Technology Classroom. And I threw a lot of information at you, so it's question and answer time. What you got? Uh, I have just a couple It's, that's, a, that's a huge issue. The problem is that a lot of the newer phones don't work without non-free software in some way. So. Like is, it a, is that a recommended solution then? It doesn't work for me, I'll, I'll say that. It, I've, I've known people that have used it, that still use it. Um, but it, uh, like I said, I'm on the Pine phone train. Uh, I think this is the future, but it also doesn't work yet. Kind of works. My camera doesn't work, for example. That's why I have this other phone. It's just a camera. Um, I haven't used them myself, so I'm not entirely sure. Aren't they programs that can uh, run on? So they're, they're both uh, essentially built on top of uh, FreeBSD or OpenBSD. Right? Like they Right, so these slides are kind of simplified. Um, comparing OpenBSD without the non-free firmware and um, LibreCMC and GNU Linux with firewall software running as a router, that's a little more advanced than this talk. Um, you'd have to actually like compare those three together to see how they handled the load. Um, I, I've, I've known people that have used like a, a full server with free software, GNU Linux, um, and firewall software. So um, how do you compare those? A, a lot of it comes down to the config. Um, as far as I know, they basically are the same thing. Just 
different ways of doing the same thing. Thank you. Regarding the two youth, um, uh, you just said I've heard all things young, but uh, one extreme solution that some people like to do, they actually go out to commercial mines and they'll destroy like, you know, stores or banks or something like that. You can buy monitors which don't have any more feasibility at all to just dumb screen someone bringing them to you. So we'll get that. Yeah, that, that would work. That's maybe more expensive, yeah. but um, yeah. that would work. Like I said, an extreme solution. Um, right. I also heard there's like a company I think called Spectrum, which kind of makes more of a lower end TV, but apparently they, they make a couple models that will show like dumb TVs, you know, just like regular TVs. And uh, I think some of them are even made in the US. So that's the plug to share about that. Cool. Uh, the name was Scepter? Scepter. Cool. So like vote with your dollars. If you, next time you're buying a TV, buy a dumb one. And then they'll see that those dumb ones sell. Yeah, that's Okay. you mentioned before who was the new leader group, so um, I remember watching a talk on Four Group by uh, Janelle Hudson a few years back. And what could you expand upon what is the difference between like core group and leader group? Like what is what is uh, core group lacking? So I, Corbu, I it was um, open, like in terms of the, the whole process was pretty successfully made the table like that. Mostly. Um, they both have uh, ME disabled as far as I know. But the core boot project has some binary blobs that you can't compile yourself. Uh, Libre boot is all software that you can compile. Non free binary blobs. Thank you. All right, I saw a few questions over there. Red shirt first. Um, yeah, you left out one very big topic. Okay. Um, which is a little bit more essential than that of TV. Okay. Um, namely, cars. You know, you are right. I think cars could actually be like a whole, whole nother talk. Um, I have been struggling with freedom of car tech for so long. And, um, you're so right. Um, the last, I, I just had like a few car accidents happen in front of my house that smashed up my cars. So I've seen several car uh, infotainment systems and they are getting worse and worse and worse. Um, my current car has an LTE modem that I can't turn off and uh, that's a problem. The last one before that had a Wi-Fi that I couldn't turn off. And every time I, I would turn it off, or I'd, I would disconnect it, and then every time I would drive past the dealership, it would reconnect. Um, and then it would try to update the software and be like, hey, whoa, oh, stop that. Gotcha. Um, it's a huge issue and it needs to be addressed. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, I don't see a solution. Um, you could like strip out the, the car stereo, but and how it's tied to everything in the car's diagnostics. So it's it's a big issue, and I don't, I don't know how to fix it, but it needs to get fixed. Um, uh, behind red shirt. So uh, I think part of the reason why we have not reached server for so many phones and laptops now is that there are no components that, that can run free software, like no Wi-Fi components. Is there any installed foundation for Wi-Fi systems, modern, that run free firmware? Uh, there are some free Wi-Fi chips. They're just not the, the hyper cheap ones. So when um, a company is trying to make something as cheap as possible, they'll oftentimes not use those. Um, is it going to be like the brand new latest letter? You know, probably not. But there, there are free wireless cards. Your default BIOS might not allow you to boot with it in there, but you can flash that and fix that. I'm surprised you didn't mention the Trace browser. Are you familiar? So uh, I kind of mentioned it. I mentioned Chrome-based browsers. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I could say that. I didn't. <laughs> right, so um, J Shelter project I work on sees a lot of the things that Brave is doing and tries to implement it as an extension uh, that works on Firefox and Chrome. And Extensions are apparently limited. So it's true, and they're getting more limited with the manifest B3. So it, it's an issue. Um, There's a, there's a, within the free software community, there's a big uh, discussion about Chrome, Chromium, and the, the freedom of it, and it's, uh, I'm not going to get into it, but it, it's an issue. Um, it covers all the categories you mentioned before things have to do with it, so. Uh, it, it's a complicated issue. Search. Do you have any there? Um, I do. Um, I don't have a good one though. Uh, you can self-host some. There's a Yaki. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Y a c a. No, Y a c y. Um, there's another one you can self-host that I forget the name of because it's late. Um, there's like proxy ones that use Google, but you're not using Google. Uh, StartPage is one. Um, but then you're trusting that StartPage is doing what you, yeah. Uh, there's DuckDuckGo. Um, well, I yeah. have one more suggestion, Brave Search. <laughs> Look it up. I, I, I haven't used that one. All right, I saw another hand, there's one. Right, so the number one way to make something accessible is to have things that you can buy. You know, if you go to a big box store, there's nothing that you can buy off the shelf that fits into these higher rung ladders. Um, so we need more people making those things that are accessible. Um, to the beginning of that question was how can you, um, how can you approach the subject with like significant others and things? I know I struggle with this quite a bit, um, but you know those people better than I do. So you, in general, you gotta like find their interests and lead them to follow their interests. So um, if they're you know musicians, show them some cool musician software that you can have the four freedoms with. Um, and that can go with any category. Uh, artists, there's Krita, you can do cool stuff with. Uh, name something, there's, there's plenty of software out there. Uh, whether like they're gonna get to the top rung of all these ladders, you know, probably not. Um, am I going to? No, yeah. But uh, you just gotta kind of follow their interest and uh, make suggestions, maybe try something out, maybe build something for them. Oh, oh, didn't see you. It's a, it's a wide room. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm glad you brought up those because those are all really cool projects. I love them. Um, so when people communicate, sometimes 
do you have to read what they wrote somewhere that you aren't? Um, so Knitter it allows you to read Twitter without telling Twitter that you read Twitter. Uh, it's cool and you can self-host it. That's really great. Uh, New Pipe is a F-Droid app that is better than the, the proprietary YouTube app. Um, you can download um, YouTube videos, you can download audio, you can um, listen to things uh, with the phone turned off. That's like an advanced feature that you gotta pay for. That's ridiculous. New Pipe's great. Um, uh, what else? Bibliogram is uh, Instagram without Instagram. Um, it's it's cool stuff, but you know it's if you compare it to that that chat slide, you know it's free software, free client with a non-free backend. So how much you participate is is up to you at that point. Um, but it's at least giving you the option to not share data that you don't want to share. Um, so it's cool that it puts some of that data control in your control. Did, did I you threw a lot of front ends at me. Did, did I cover them all? Uh, Knitter, uh, Billy Graham, New Pipe. Uh, there's a Scribe Rip, which is one from Medium. It's pretty cool. There's a there's a browser extension that you can automatically like rewrite the the URLs to those. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, Good question. Um, I was wondering if you could mention two DP things. Uh, one is a DP thing that's very cool, and one is a DP thing that's very bad. Uh, those two things are Discord and Gemini. Can you talk about those two things? Um, I would love to talk about Discord and Gemini. <laughs> um, so Discord is a um, aggressive, non-free client with a uh, unknown backend and some terms of service where you can't make a free client for it. Now I was using a free client for it on the command line and it was awesome. But then uh, that became an abandoned project. I forget the name of it. It was written in Golang, it was pretty cool. Um, but it doesn't work anymore. Uh. Yeah, I was banned uh, for using an IRC like gateway. <laughs> <laughs> right. I wasn't banned, um, but it was, it was so good for a little while, and now, um, so I do have a lot of friends on Discord, and I use the web client, which isn't, it's like non-free JavaScript, I don't like it. I would love a, a solution, if you find a solution, email me. Uh, Gopher, Gopher is like the small, small web, uh, S-M-O-L. Uh, it's like a re-envisioning of web pages without all the HTML and CSS. It's just like uh, super limited. Um, I think it's a cool idea, but when you take out all the interactivity of the web, you're gonna lose out on shopping and pictures, GIFs, videos, like sharing video. There's a lot of cool stuff on the web that you can do that you have to have uh, all the cool tech that we've built. Um, so I, I think it's going to be like a, a cool geeky thing that's not going to have much use. Yeah, the whole friendly thing could not influence your decision making. <laughs> right. Uh, that was a hope friendly thing, but not a New York City friendly thing. Just repeating it back to the mic. So I have not used it. I've, I've read about it, and there's some really cool stuff with it. It has, referring to these slides, it's like free software with non-free drivers so that it works on like a lot of hardware. So it's got that um, working against it, but then a lot of the design of it is that you can run things that you don't trust on your system. Um, a lot of what I've been talking about is running things that you do trust. Um, but I, 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 have, uh, I have heard a cool use case for it, uh, or at least that type of tech. You could apply it to whatever other system. Say you get a PDF 
and you don't trust the PDF. You want to open the PDF. You could open up a container, open up that PDF, view the PDF, and hope that it wasn't malware that can escape the container. But uh, we're at a hacker convention, so like maybe we'll see some PDFs that escape containers this weekend. Right. Right. And it, at the end of the day, it kind of comes down to how much, how much are you comfortable with yourself? Um, and everybody's threat assessments are going to be different. Um, how high everybody's going to climb up each ladder is going to be different. So, um, Right. So one thing I would like to see is a lot of these like top tier th a lot of these top tier options are piggybacking off the work of others. So um, Trisquel is an operating system uh, made by a friend of mine, Ruben Rodriguez, and it's uh, Ubuntu. You know Ubuntu, but it's uh, Ubuntu without all the non-free software. So what I would like to see is Cubes given the same treatment. I'd like to see either cubes themselves or someone else um, either make a secondary version of cubes or uh, a cubes libre fork that just solves, I think it's like a small issue, like just strip out, use a different kernel, use the Linux libre kernel, and then like that pretty much solves everything I'm talking about. Right, but it's all like a matter of trade-off. So a lot of um, a lot of it comes down to convenience. If somebody makes a, a new distro that gives something as a default, then more people are likely to use that. Um, you can compile whatever kernel you want for whatever distro you want. You know, no one, no one's stopping anybody from doing that, and nobody's stopping anybody from forking a free software project and doing whatever they want with it. So. It's just a matter of like volunteer hours. If anybody like really wants to see that, then they'll do it. Um, it's the beauty of it. Uh, yeah, but um, <laughs> you know, there's. You ever played Watch Dogs? You know, it's a proprietary video game that like analyzes this exact situation. It's hackers running around in smart cities. Um, it's a problem, you know, and we can mitigate that with uh, laws. Um, several states have banned facial recognition. That's a good first step. You know, 
some of it's things that are out of your control. So you can get like super into politics and local politics and you can try to make issues and prevent things before they become a reality. Um, but most of this talk is about focusing on starting with yourself, uh, freeing yourself as much as you can, and hopefully spreading that to um, others that might be interested in freeing themselves, um, freeing your city. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot that uh, there's there's a lot of like city infrastructure that is free. Um, public transportation, all those like kiosks, you know, they're they're probably run on free software. You know, the API that keeps track of all the times, um, it's probably free software on the back end. Yeah, a lot of it is free. That's that's it's a really cool part of it. Is it free for you? You know, maybe not, but. Um, Get active in local politics, you know, make it an issue. We don't, um, <laughs> but we thought about it. So uh, this kind of goes back to the trust but verify. Um, these VPN providers are coming up with privacy policies, they're answering questionnaires, like you said, and you have to take their word for it. And sometimes you'll see um, unknown backends that publish code and they say, this is our backend code can you verify that they are running that code on the server? Now, a lot of the VPNs are probably running OpenVPN, which is free software, but how do you verify that software that someone else is running on their server without SSHing into that server and checking it out? Um, it's like a problem. And then you have to trust the auditor, and like it's and it's tricky. It's, it's tricky. Right. Oh, auditor's coming. Load up that second image. You know, it's that, that's a little more paranoid, you know. But it's it's an issue. You can't verify it. Maybe. Problem is, FSF's like 14 people. Uh, four of them are in this room. And <laughs> we are doing so much stuff. We got our hands in so many pots. That if every time we come up with a new idea, we run it, then all those ideas are going to be badly executed. So it's an issue. Um, but you can self-host OpenVPN. So if you were the tech savvy person in your group, you could say, I know that trusting VPNs is, a, is an issue. I'm self-hosting it. Let me show you how I'm doing it. Yeah, help, help me with run the server fees or power costs or whatever. And you still need a lot of people to access through that VPN to, to get lost in the crowd. Right. So I, I do know some people that, that run a business uh, doing VPNs. And do I trust them more than other people? You know, I don't know. Um, but I don't have any names. I don't, I don't have any VPN recommendations. Um, it's an issue. Uh, uh, it's confidential. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks, thanks for the, the, the assist there. Uh, Mumble is great. I love Mumble. We use Mumble every day. It's great. Self-host it. It's low resources. You can chat with all your friends. It's great. Love it. It is on the remote communications wiki. Check it out. Any other questions? It's getting real late. It is. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So that wraps the last track for today, everyone. Uh, tomorrow morning at 11, the first track will be in this room, An Engineer's Guide to the Linux Kernel. So if you can make it, come. <laughs>